The next speaker is uh, Michael Ossolin from Paris. Uh, Michael has got extensive experience on using several different presbyopia correcting IOLs in the market for several years, and he's going to be sharing with us some extensive data from his own clinical practice. Michael. I have to thank Joachim for making it clear for you that the clinical outcome of multifocal IOLs is essentially based on the physics behind it. So what I would like to share myself is our clinical approach to multifocality in uh, cataract surgery. And uh, the core message here is that the level of uh, achievement that we have achieved with those lenses makes it now probably available for almost everyone. Uh, in effect, they were put to the market more than 30 years ago, but they are still less than 6% of the French market, probably less than 1% of the world market. As in my practice and the practice of most experts in this field, I know it's over 70%. So on the right, you see my uh, adoption rate of multifocal IOLs as opposed to uh, monofocal IOLs over time. Um, I try to use different lenses in both eyes of the same patient uh, for a question of safety, complementarity, and also education. And uh, I have had the possibility to compare the main lenses that are available in the French market for the last years, and I now present uh, the result on 2,100 cases. Uh, and uh, of course, all these lenses are a bit different, but essentially they work the same way. They split the light between distance and near vision, and what we hope is that they're able now to preserve a part of the energy for intermediate vision, which has become so important in our daily lives with uh, digital interfaces. So you see the distribution of multifocal IOLs in this series, and um, uh, you see that most of these lenses, they perform equally well for the correction of vision in near and distance vi uh, vision, as shown here, but they have marked difference in terms of the correction of intermediate vision. So here you see that the proportion of patients that reach JEGO4 or JEGO5 at 65 centimeters is almost double with the more advanced lenses than the conventional bifocal lenses. Here you can see that, uh, that's another way of showing it, the Liberty lens, that's the red line, is ahead of the other ones in terms of the proportion, the eyes that can reach JEGO3, JEGO2, or JEGO4. Another advantage of doing mix and match is that you can actually pretty much compare the subjective assessment of the outcome by the patient themselves. And you see here that as compared to the lentis, which was the lens I was using uh, a few years ago, the fine, fine vision, which is a trifocal diffractive lens that has a dual diffractive network on its surface, uh, doesn't perform as well for both distance, intermediate, and near. As compared to the lentis, Medicontour, performs equally well for distance and near, and uh, slightly less for intermediate. But if you compare Medicontour to the more recent trifocal design from Alcon Panoptics lens, you see that they, they are equally performing, uh, with Medicontour being slightly better for near and Panoptics being slightly better for distance. So of course, if we get back to the energy distribution that lies behind those findings in the clinic, you understand that lenses have to distribute the energy as a function of pupil size, and they do it differently. Uh, you can see here that for a 2.225 aperture, it's pretty much the same with all lenses, but the peaks are markedly different. Joaquin has exposed this in detail. But the most interesting part is that you see on these graphs that for a 4.5 aperture, the Liberty lens is able to distribute far more energy for distance vision than any other lens on the market that has trifocal capability, while retaining a very significant amount of light for near and intermediate vision at the same time. So if we translate this into clinical outcome using defocusing curve monocularly, you can see that as compared to most bifocal lenses, more advanced design have far better outcome for intermediate vision and this shows here, and you see that there are three or four lenses that are on top of the market. And you can see that Liberty is among the three best lenses, both for distance and near vision. Um, this is the translation of its ability to transfer energy the right way in terms of contrast sensitivity. And you see that in spared eye study, there is no difference for contrast sensitivity between monofocal lens and multifocal lens using the same IOL design.
Uh, Joachim has already exposed the uh, uh, detail, the, the effect of this ability to transfer energy in terms of aloe, uh, which are the uh, uh, probably uh, overrated side effect in the patients because most patients actually don't complain so much about it, but even less with a proper design of optics. Um, it has come to the point where I now use these lenses in my practice for almost everyone, providing that the macula and the optic nerves are normal. This is a typical example of an extreme case where we had to change the DZEC uh, graft for the endothelium in this patient by a DMEC, and then she later developed a cataract surgery that we were able to treat with a multifocal liberty lens, and she now has 20-20 distance and near. Uh, another important factor in choosing the lens uh, for your practice is the ability uh, of the material to withstand the uh, test of time. And here, um, in a series of nearly 1,000 lenses from Lentis, uh, we all had uh, the experience of a few lenses getting calcified over time, and this is one of the four cases I had. The last point that has to be taken into account when choosing a lens is its ability to oppose migration of uh, uh, cellular uh, growth from the capsule uh, and PCO. And you can see that here the material is probably less important than the design and the ability to have a design with a very sharp edge which is uh, implemented in the Liberty lens by unique manufacturing process without polishing makes it possible to restrict uh, the likeliness of having an early opacification of the posterior capsule. So this is the evolution of my practice. I started like anyone else with Restore and Technis and then moved to Ateliza when the price got down, then moved to Fine Vision when they came up with the concept of trifocality. But nowadays, Medicontour Liberty represents about half of my uh, IOLs in my practice. So it's a good choice for many reasons. I hope you got the core message there that we should use them more. Thank you very much for your attention.